I first got into mixing, uh, well, engineering, working at night reception at Psalm Studios um, at Trevor Horn's place in West London and, uh, you know, working long nights for next to nothing, um, building up, building up experience and all that and making cups of tea. One of the best things about what I do, I feel quite grateful for is I get to jump between a lot of different genres and so I'll be working on like we've been doing the new George Ezra record and then be doing two records of Frank Carter and Rattlesnakes. Big highlight was last year got to record some of the vocals for Jure Leaper's Future Nostalgia and that won best vocal at the Grammys which was quite nice. At the moment all producers and artists have the ability to record as many vocals as they want so there's like endless takes and endless stacks of vocals um so with that kind of mass of information everything's got to be super tight especially for radio especially if you're working on a track that has a lot of programmed elements or a lot of like uh software instruments that are perfectly in tune if the vocals aren't that then they can stick out dealing with that kind of m that large mass of vocals in a, in a in a traditional pop production you've got a lot of editing to get through before you even get to the creative <laughs> or the more fun side of mixing a record so um like anything that takes that slightly more laborious because but like i mean uh, we're going to talk about vocal line but before i started using that I would manually be going through everything, chopping each little bit and putting it in, in time to make sure that it was perfect and that it works, but it's hours and hours and hours of work before you can even start mixing the record. I think people expect things a bit quicker and a bit immediately kind of want to hear a result. And sometimes you have to create double tracks out of the original lead vocal by kind of doing a, an alternative comp of them. So those elements like vocaline let you kind of whip that into shape pretty speedily. But I never get any kind of strange uh, artifacts or anything from using vocaline. It's just, yeah, solid. I was working with an artist recently on a kind of engineering and mix and the artist couldn't do a bunch of the backing vocals due to COVID, so the producer had to do the vocals. And obviously we wanted it to sound like the artist's voice, so we were able to use um, Vocaline to kind of nudge it bang in to time so that you wouldn't know, you just heard the, har the harmony underneath the lead without it being drawn to your attention that it was actually a different vocalist. I often get sent a lot of vocals that are varying in the quality at which they're recorded. Um, and always the performances are amazing because I'm lucky enough to get to work with brilliant artists. But for whatever reason, sometimes it might not be a pristine recording. And so things like that really help you when you've got to just make it work in the track. Often, like we will, even with stuff that I work on at engineering or production level, you end up cycling back to using the demo vocal because it just captured a moment that was like uh, really precious to what the song is about or what the the vocalist was feeling at that moment. And so it's more important to get that emotion across than it is to get a pristine new vocal. So like any tools that help me work that demo vocal into the final production are like are great. With slight nuances, might change within the track meaning that the the, the timing and the, the rhythm of the vocal is different vocal line ultra means that you can just take the demo and put it into the kind of new flow that the vocalist has found <laughs> vocal line ultra saves me so much time anything that takes those kind of tasks off my hands and gives me time to mix and be creative is like essential mm -hmm.